So now that I've shown you how layers work in Illustrator and how you overlap shapes, we're going to start drawing some characters. So I'm going to go to File and Open. In my Chapter 6 folder, I'm going to go to Demos and Drawing Porky Pig. Now first, I want to start on this bottom layer and just show you how layers work in an Illustrator file. Okay, so you can see here on my Layers panel, if I turn all those off, you always start with your template at the bottom. And then notice how I drew just the ears. Notice how they're chopped off right here, okay? Because you got to keep in mind, you're not going to see those solid or straight edges when I draw the shape of the head. You overlap your shapes. Okay, then his chin would kind of pop out from the bottom, so I drew his chin on its own layer. Then his eyes. Then his nose. Then his mouth. And then his wrinkles. You stack details on top of each other okay so i'm going to close that no need to save it and i will go to file and open again and i'll open up the top one drawing porky pig okay so what i've done here is i've already started a file you have all your layers ready to go you have all your pieces here and i'm going to start by colorizing his head so again, notice how his ears look like they go right through his head. They overlap his head. On your swatches panel, I've saved a color set right there called Porky Colors. So I'm going to click once on the left ear, hold shift and select the other left ear. And I want to make sure I'm on my fill and I will fill those with this skin tone. And that's it. Okay, if I'm done with a layer, I can also lock it. That way I can't accidentally bump it or delete it. Now I'm going to select the edge of the top of his head. I'm on my fill, and I'll fill it with skin tone again. Notice how that cuts off the ears. They overlap. The ears disappear behind the head. That's why you overlap your shapes. I'm going to lock that, and... I have to draw the chin here, but I can't see that. So I'm going to turn off the eyeball next to the head shape and then come up to the chin. With my pen tool, I've already got the skin tone, so I might as well just keep it because the chin is just going to be three anchor points. So I'll start right here. One at the top, one across the bottom, and one up the other side right there. That's all I need to draw because when I turn on the head, it comes out from the bottom of the head. The chin is done. We'll lock that. Now I click on the eyes. I'm going to click on the inside edge right there. Hold shift and click on the inside edge right there. There's my fill color and I'll fill those black. Click on the outside edge right there. Shift click the other outside edge and I'll fill those white. Now the eyes are done. The nose doesn't need color because it's the same color as the skin. So I'll just lock that. And now I need to create the tongue in the mouth. The problem is I can't see it. So I'm going to turn off the ears, the head, the chin, the eyes, and the nose. I'm going to just focus on the mouth. So to make sure I'm on the right layer, I'm going to take my black arrow, just click on the edge of the mouth, and that will jump up to that layer for me. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what we're going to do here. Now the trick in Illustrator is I need to make it look like the tongue is inside the shape of the mouth. So here is the trick. You're going to start outside the mouth. Click and drag a curve that goes up and then come across all the way outside the mouth and drag a curve that goes down like that. Okay, let me turn off my scan so you can see that. You start outside, draw all the way across the mouth and end outside. 
Okay, what you're gonna need for this is a new panel. So I'm gonna go to Window Menu and Path Finder. What I do with this panel is I stick it in the upper left corner up there, kind of out of the way. And all I need to do now is take my black arrow, click and drag right where the line for the tongue hits the line for the mouth, right across there. And on the bottom left corner of my Pathfinder, right down here, is a Pathfinder called Divide. What this line is going to allow me to do is divide his mouth into a dark red space for the upper part and a lighter pink for the lower part. It's also going to recognize that we don't need the ends of the line. So in the bottom left corner, I click Divide. It cleans up the ends of those lines. And whenever you use the Divide Pathfinder, it makes a group. So I have to go to Object Menu and ungroup the pieces. Basically what Pathfinder did is it created two pieces like a puzzle and it glued the pieces together. So I have to ungroup them or unglue them. And you'll see it right here when I click outside and then I click on the edge of the tongue and just pull that apart a little bit. You can see it sliced out the tongue and put it together like a puzzle piece. So I will go to edit, undo, moving the tongue. And now I can fill it with color. Select the bottom edge of the tongue. I'm on my fill color, so I'll fill it pink. Select the edge of the mouth, and I'll fill it dark red. And now I can zoom out, turn on the nose, the eyes, the chin, the head, and the ears. I'll turn off my scan, and I've got him done from the chin up already. Okay, so like I always say with all your files, save your progress. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'll just save it on my desktop and I will call this Last Name, First Name, Porky. I'll save it as an Illustrator file. And now I'm free to continue. So when I'm done, I'll just lock all these top layers right here. They're good. I'm going to start on the bow tie. Okay, what you have to keep in mind is this character, the ends of the lines are nice and rounded. So what I would do is just click on your fill and hit the question mark key. Okay, the line is already set up to be rounded because that's what I worked on last time. So we're good to go. What I have to do in order to draw this bow tie correctly is look at the stacking order. Okay, this red part of the tie, and this is the thing you got to think of. Don't think that you're drawing a tie, because ties can be complicated. What I'm going to think of is drawing three separate red shapes that when they're put together will look like a tie. Okay, so here's how I'm going to draw this. I'm going to take my pen tool, start inside of his face, because the tie has to go overlap or underneath the head. So I'm on the bow tie layer. I'm going to start up here. Click and drag down. Right before I get to the sharp turn, I drag down. Around the sharp turn, I drag up and overlap the knot. Come back, back, and back to the start. Okay. If you have to review that, rewind the video a little bit. Command click to deselect. And now the center part, the knot, should overlap this piece. So I'm going to start over here. Click and drag down. Right before a turn, I'll click and drag. Right after the turn, I click and drag. Up into his face and back to the start. Command click to deselect, and now I draw the third piece. So I start inside the face, overlap. I'll click and drag down, right down here before the sharp turn. I'll click and drag a point before a sharp turn, drag a point after a sharp turn, right up here. Drag a point before a sharp turn, right 
after a sharp turn, back up into his face and back to the start. Now keep in mind, the reason why I drew from right to left is the stacking order. This piece would go first, then the knot would sit on top of that, and this piece would sit on top of that. And you're only gonna see that once you fill everything with color. So I'm gonna select all three of those pieces, click on the fill, and click red. And it will look like a bow tie. There we go. Command S, save my progress. Lock the layer, it's done. Now when I come down to the blue coat, I obviously don't want it to be red, so I'll hit the question mark key. And the blue coat is really four pieces. One big blue piece, and then a second piece, which would just be this little line. The third piece would be another big blue, blue piece, and the fourth piece would be another line. You always start with the outer edge of everything. Then you draw the details inside. Okay, so here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to start on this corner right here. Click, click to start that little straight edge. Option key to start from a corner, and I'll go down. Right down here, that's a pretty smooth edge. So right down here before the sharp turn. I click and drag down. Then I come around that sharp turn and drag up. If the edge is too long, put a point up the side right here. I'll come up into his tie because I need to overlap into his face. And then I'll click right here, right above his shoulder to start again to come down. Click and drag to start the curve that goes down. Halfway down, click and drag. Right down here, before the sharp turn, I click and drag down. After the sharp turn, I click and drag down to the right. And if I'm ending on a corner, I wanna hold my option key and drag. So I make one big solid outline. Hold my command key and click outside to deselect that large shape. Then I start right here on the corner. Click and drag up, click and drag up, and command click. That's all I need to draw. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start at this corner again. I'm gonna click and drag to the right, come around that sharp turn and drag up. About halfway up the side, I'll click and drag up. And again, overlap your shape. I'll go into his face, come back down, and then I click for a second right above this starting point. Now I go on this point, click and drag down to start a curve that goes down. Halfway down, I can add a point to help me to control long curves. And again, at the bottom, right before a sharp turn, I click and drag down. Around a sharp turn, I click and drag. Right over here, before the sharp turn, I click and drag. And when I come back to the start, if I'm ending on a corner, which I am, I hold my option key, click and drag up. When this large blue shape is done, command and click to deselect. Now I can draw the single line. So to make it look like it connects, I just start on this corner. Click and drag up. Go to the end of the line, click and drag up. Now with my black arrow, I can just start right here. I don't want to hit the lines. Lines are just standalone lines. It's the shape that I want to fill with color. So I'll select this shape right across to this shape, click on my fill, and I'll fill those blue. And there we go. Now it, just because of that one line, it looks like he tucks his arms behind his back. That's it, one little line will trick the viewer into thinking there's depth 
to this illustration. The coat is done, I'll lock it, come down to the body layer. Obviously the body's not gonna be blue, that's left over from the last thing that I drew, so I'll click on the blue and hit the question mark key. And again, for the body, you only want to do the very outside edges. Don't worry about wrinkles right here. Don't worry about these little wrinkles or those. You gotta trace the very outside edge of the color. So I'm gonna start by overlapping my shape and I'm gonna come down to this corner right there. Option key for a corner, I'll come down right before the turn of his knee, I'll come down right after the turn of his knee, right to that corner. I'm not gonna worry about the wrinkles. Option key for a corner, I'll come down right to the bottom of the curve, I'll come down and to the right, right up here before the turn of his heel, up and to the right, and right up there, up and to the left. I'm not going to worry about wrinkles. Option key to start from a corner, no option key at the end. Don't worry about the wrinkles. Option key for a corner, short line to come down because I only have to go to here. Short distance down to the left. I'll come around that sharp turn, down to the right. Now I'll come down right about the bottom of the curve here, down and to the right. I'll come up around this sharp turn right there. And then I just click and drag right there. I'm not going to worry about wrinkles. Option key to start from a corner right before the sharp turn of his knee, I go up. Around the sharp turn of his knee, I go up. Right up to the corner, go up. I'm not going to worry about that wrinkle. Those come last. Option key for a corner, go up to the right, and I'm going to overlap. Remember, the skin goes way up here, so I gotta click up here, click, click, go over the tie, click, click, and back to the start. Okay, I've closed up my shape, went all the way back to the start. Command and click to deselect, and then you take care of the wrinkles. I always just start from the corner, click and drag down, click and drag down, Command click to deselect. Start from the corner, click and drag out, click and drag out. Command click. Start from the corner, click and drag, click and drag. Command click. This corner, click and drag, click and drag. Command click. Start from this corner, click and drag, click and drag. Command click. And from this corner, click and drag, click and drag, command click. Now I take my black arrow, just hit the edge of his body. I'm on my fill and I'll fill him with skin tone. So here's what he looks like without the scan. And we're almost there. Big flabby wrinkly body here with those lines. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my scan, lock the body. Then I come down to the shoes. I'm not gonna draw skin colored shoes, so I'll click on the fill and hit the question mark key, and I will zoom in right there. The shoes really just tuck out from behind his skin. That's why they're below. So I'm gonna start by overlapping. Click and drag out right here, around the bottom curve right there, up underneath his heel and back to the start. Command click and I'll do it again. Start by overlapping on the skin. Come down, around the bottom and around the toes and back to the start. With my black arrow, I can select the bottom edge of that shoe or hoof or whatever you wanna call it. Hold shift, select the bottom of the other one I'm on the fill and I will fill them black. I can zoom out.
And now I've got Porky Pig done. I have a layer here called background scene. You don't have to draw that. We're just going to draw just Porky Pig. I can throw away the background scene. Don't need it. I can throw away my template scan. Don't need that. And there is my final drawing of Porky Pig. Command S one more time so we can move on to other characters. I'll see you in the next video.